Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 9. We are on. I greet you again, those that are coming in, and also those on the Facebook. Uh, we've started our in person. It's in person now. To the case you don't know, next Friday we want you to be in the in the house, unless you live far away. And I will tell you why. Because this teaching also, we are going to be praying. We are going to be praying on Fridays. A lot of prayers will be going on. Amen? That's why we have to try and start on time. So we have enough time to pray. Amen? Amen. Just 30 minutes I will teach. Then we go into prayer. Which will be powerful prayer. Amen. Genesis 9 20 to 27. It's a very good story that some of us know. And what I'll be teaching today, I'll be answering questions. Why do people suffer from financial bondage? Or maybe I should put it this way why do Christians suffer? From financial bondage. There are many reasons I will be given, and then following that, we will go into prayer. Genesis 9 20 to 27. I will start with number one. And Noah became, began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in the tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his true two brothers outside. Shem and Jepheth took a garment laid on boat of their shoulder and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. In other words, they didn't see the nakedness of their father, but Ham saw it and did not cover him, but Ham told his two brothers. He told Shem and Jepheth. For those two, what they did, they covered him up. Their face were torn away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. So Noah woke up from his wine and knew that his young son has done to him. Then he said, Cause be to Canaan. Now let me ask you a question. Who saw the nakedness? Who did the father cost? Canaan. Why Canaan? Huh? Now that's why I like Bible study Friday. We can talk. Who saw the nakedness? Ham. But the father cost who? The son. Canaan was Ham son. But Noah did not cause the person that actually sinned. But he caused who? He caused the children. So what is that? Generational cause. Generational cause. He put a curse on that bloodline. A curse on that bloodline because Canaan did not sin. It was him that sin. And the, another reason why he cannot put a curse on him was that. You guys read your Bible, right? You still remember? Do you know why? God just blessed him. That was after the flood. 
everything was starting all over again. And the first thing God did, he blessed how many of them? How many of them? Come on, think. You know it. You know it. Eight of them. There was eight of them. Noah, Ham, Shem, Japheth. How many men? And their wives. Eight of them. Right? But it caused Canaan because he put he lay a what? A generational cause on that bloodline. So, but let us continue. So now wake up from his wine and knew that his younger son has done to him. Then he said, Called being Canaan, a servant of what? Servant, he put a cause of poverty on that bloodline. A servant of servant, he shall be to his brethren. That was a cause. A servant of servant. In other words, not only Ham, but his bloodline starting from Canaan. So everybody in that bloodline, they will receive that cause. Because that cause will release a generational cause. Then see what he did. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. Is that fair? I will tell you why. We have to be careful what we do. Ham actually dishonored his father. But the two did not what? Dishonor their father. Because the Bible says a cause without a cause will not alight. What does that mean? There's a reason why he released the cause and the cause will stay upon him because he did not honor his father. But the other two honor their father. And may Cana be his servant, may God enlarge the tent. And may he dwell in the tent of Shem. And may Cana be his servant. So he put a curse on Canaan, Ham's son, that they will serve Jephet bloodline and also Shem bloodline. So why do people suffer financial bondage? Number one, generational cause. Generational cause. I have learned if someone say anything negative to me, I always reject it. Always reject it. If you have someone that has said something negative to you that you will not make it, don't just receive it. You reject it. It is not a blessing. It is a cause. We have some parents that always lay a cause upon their children. You're not going to make it. You are bad. This will not happen to you. It is a cause. Anytime someone says something negative to me, I reject it because what you are doing, you are releasing a cause upon me. And what you need to do is to what? Is to reject you. It could be simple, very simple as you're not going to make it. Or it could be simple as if you will, it will not be well with you. This is a cause. Do not accept it. You must reject it. It doesn't matter. Like in Canaan bloodline, everybody in that bloodline will suffer, guess what? Poverty. Because of spirit of poverty was released upon that bloodline. If anybody have said to you or 
Maybe you're praying your friends and say you're not going to make it. You remember, you need to reject it. You need to renounce it. It is not a blessing. Amen? Come on, church. It is not a blessing. I will reject it. Glory to God. I am going to make it. I say, I am going to make it. It is well with me. Say that. It is well with me. I am going to make it. I will not fail. I am going to make it. I am going to be successful. Because what I know in deliverance ministry, when you release a negative word in the atmosphere, they are demons and principality in the second heaven that hold on to those things. The same way as we declare God's declaration, the angels of Lord of the Lord pick it up and bring it to manifestation. It's the same way when you receive it negative. And most people, why they suffer Financial problem, financial blood bondage is in their bloodline. Maybe something happened in their bloodline. Maybe before they were born, there was a cause. Maybe there was something that somebody in the family lineage did and they lay a cause into that bloodline. Bloodline is very easy. Generational cause is very easy to discern. You don't need to have prophetic. Just look into your bloodline. Does your grandfather suffer poverty? Does your father suffer poverty? Or great grandfather suffer, suffer poverty? Look into that bloodline. You will know. Amen? When you know, also I'm going to tell you how to release yourself from it. Amen? So number one is generational cause. The good news is that Jesus has paid the price all we need to do is to execute. To execute the victory that Jesus has given to us. Amen. If it's something that you've done wrong, you need to want to ask for forgiveness of sin and repent of it. Amen, somebody. Because poverty is not the will of God. Poverty is from the devil. I hate poverty. I don't like poverty. God wants to bless everybody here and everybody watching on Facebook and every Christian supposed to be blessed. Because Jesus paid the price. It is our redemptive right. Glory to God. Redemptive right. He paid the price for that as well. Amen? Thank God we're going to be teaching 10 a.m. Sunday morning. I'm going to bring you more understanding how to deal with things like this. If we don't get to that, also we will teach on self-deliverance. There's a lot you can do by yourself. You don't... Self-deliverance. I'll show you how to do it. Amen? Number two. Why do people suffer from financial bondage? Number one is generational cause. Number two, wrong foundation. Oh, my God. Wrong foundation. Wrong foundation. Wrong business foundation. Wrong academic foundation. Wrong certificate. Amen. Wrong marital foundation. Amen. The Bible says, if, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? David was saying that if the foundation is destroyed, you're building a house. But the foundation of the house is wrong. The house will not stay. The house will collapse. Wrong foundation. It could be wrong business foundation. The business you are doing is ordained by God. Did God tell you to do it? 
Oh, Jesus. Wrong academic foundation. What you are studying in school is that what you're supposed to be studying. Wrong foundation. I have a friend who went to a law school. But the good thing about law school, if you're a lawyer, you can do anything you want to do. He said he spent so much money in law school, but that he never one day used his degree in school. I mean, in, in business. To work for anybody, to do anything, but the only thing he helped him in his business. Wrong foundation. Before we do anything, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. Wrong foundation. The business you are doing is it ordained by God. The school you are going or the school you went, is that the right school you're supposed to go? Wrong certificate. Wrong marital foundation. Are you ordained to marry the person you married? Is it the will of God? Amen. If you have a wrong foundation, it's going to affect your finances. It will put you in financial bondage. Rob said, if the foundation is destroyed, that's why it's very important before we do things, let's spend time on the foundation. Let's make sure it's the will of God. Let's lay an adequate, correct foundation. Amen. Amen. Because the foundation is right, we can build higher. But the foundation is not solid. You can go higher. Amen. It's a saying that attitude Determine altitude. Amen. Wrong foundation. It's not too late. We can go and correct that foundation. Wrong business foundation. Wrong academic foundation. Amen. I don't for myself it's good because I also study business, but I don't, never want to work for anybody. But thank God I work for myself. <laughs> Amen. I never one day use my degree to work for somebody. I have a master's degree in theology. I never use it to work for anybody. I work for myself doing God's business. I have a doctorate degree in theology. I never use it to work for anybody. So it's a good foundation. Amen. But it's very important to know this. What is God called you to do? Don't rush to start. That's why I've seen that everybody just wants to start and rush and do something. Don't do something. Do what God has called you to do. If not, you'll be building on a wrong foundation. It's not going to stand. It's not going to last. It's going to collapse. It's going to affect your finances. It's going to put you in bondage. The wrong business foundation, wrong academic foundation, wrong certificate, wrong marital foundation, and even more, it will result in problem. It will result in problem if we don't have good foundation. Can I hear amen? Can I hear amen? Number three. I love this. All of us need to check ourselves. Number three. Too much responsibilities. Too much responsibility. You are doing too much. Are you doing what God called you to do? God will not tell you to do too much. Hello? Sometimes we want to do everything. Stop doing everything. You are not called to do everything. Even on Facebook, I'm talking to you. 
You are not called to do everything. All the pastors and the minister will tell you the first time I begin to do leaders training. I don't know if you guys remember what I told you. I said, God did not call me to do everything. You remember? I told them, you are not here to, <laughs> to chill, to sit, and to watch me do everything. I told them, so God didn't call me to do everything. In the beginning, I'm going to do everything. I'm just buying time, waiting until I see faithful members. People that are trustworthy. People of integrity. People that are faithful. And that's exactly what I do. God is coming to do everything. Left to me alone, I just want to come, preach, teach, pray, lay hands, and get out. God didn't call me to do what? Everything. I told them, God didn't call me to do everything. You are here to help me. We went through leadership training for years, I will tell you. Intense teaching. Amen? So, two much responsibility. You have too much on your plate. Amen. What are you called to do? Amen. I don't do everything. Actually, that's one of leader's skills. When you say leader, a leader always delegates. All this what? Delegate and focus on the bigger picture. Not doing everything. Let me ask you, what are you called to do? What are your responsibility? Or what are the responsibility God has given to you? That's what you should do. It's a saying. Jack of all trades. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will be a master at least of one. At least one. You can't be master of everything. Amen. Honest, this will help you. Sometimes we do so much. And we don't have enough time to focus on what we're supposed to be doing. On what God has called us to do. Amen. Do you if I, Tell you something. Do you know how many nations that want me to come now? I'm telling you, I'm serious. Pastor Manchester will tell Israel. We were going the other time, there was COVID. We couldn't make it to Israel. They were with me. They beg you, please come now. I said, No, I got to hear God. Apostle Prophet, uh, what's his name? Bonnie, Prophet Bonnie. This apostle, you know, he's supposed to come here and ordain me. Consecrate. That's an apostle, we don't really ordain the same. The same. Or consecrate him in the office of an apostle. We were on our way going to do that. COVID start. We turn back, we stay in Dubai. Remember? They want me to come. Zimbabwe want me to come. Dubai. Dubai is waiting. They said the church is waiting. Since you guys left, everything went down. So when you come back, you will go and say, No, God is there. God will send somebody here if it's not me, if it's not time. I hear what I'm saying. Nations. I listen. I hear God. I pray, God, do you want me to go? I don't want too much responsibility. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to be where God wants me to be. Amen. Even Ghana has spiritual sons there. Oh, Papa, Papa, come. Papa, come. Papa, he ain't coming up. Until God say, come. Too much what? Responsibility. Amen. You have to go home today or tomorrow, sit down and write things down. All, the, all your responsibility. You see, God, God give you that. Are you supposed to be doing all of this? All of this. It's too much. It will affect you. It will put you in financial bondage. You're just going to be spending here. Oh, God. Apple. You are looking after too many things at the same time. That's the we still number three. Too much responsibility means you are looking after too many things at 
the same time. Amen. Stay in your lane. But before you can stay in your lane, you have to know your lane. These are fed people spending money all over the place, your time. Do you know that time is money and money is time? It's not good to lose time on something that you are not ordained or called to do. Or it's not your responsibility. I don't joke with my time. I'm telling you, I don't joke with time. I was trained to manage time. I was trained to use time. I don't buy time. Some of you buy time. Hello? Stop buying what is free. Time is free. Time is a gift from God. Don't buy it. Use it. If I tell you anything I've done today, you won't believe. <laughs> you will not believe. What I've been, what I've done, I do everything. I still don't show. I took a, took a nap. Time. I schedule my time. I schedule even my sleep. I said, I'm going to sleep for two hours. Then I'll come to church. But I'm going to be up early doing stuff, taking care of what I need to be taking care of. My responsibility. Then I came home, I said, two hours, I'm going to take a nap, and then I'm going to be in church because I have to be here on time, before time. Even I was taking a nap when Pastor Matula woke me up at this certain time. I turned off my phone too because, man, you got to be smart. Anytime I want to get good rest, if I don't turn on my phone, somebody calls and wake me up. Amen? Because the time that I have is just to do my responsibility. I, don't, I can't do too much. Can I? I can, but I will not. I told Pastor May to wake me up. I turned on my own phone. Then she woke me up. Man, I was enjoying that sleep. I'm still, I said, man, already. I look at this time already. Then I get up. I run here. Amen? Because I'm supposed to be doing this. This is my assignment. And even the, the work what I did early this morning, up to afternoon, is my responsibility. So stop doing too much. What are you called to do? You're losing time. You're supposed to trading your time for money or something spiritual. That's why I don't play with this. It's spiritual. Amen. What money cannot buy? Amen. We need to convert our time to something tangible. Too much responsibility. We need to check our responsibility and pray and see God to lead us. Do we suppose? Are we responsible? Amen? That's number three. Let's review a little bit. Number one, intellectual cost. We deal with that with prayer. I will tell you what we need to do. Number two, wrong foundation. Please, before you do anything, do it right. Consult professional people to help you. People that have experience, people that have done this before. Amen. Don't do try and error. How do you say that? Try and? Okay, that's what they call that. All right, I don't do it because I don't do it. Amen. Number three. Too much responsibility. It will affect, it will put you in financial bondage. It will. Amen. Because I will tell you, every responsibility will require money. If not money, it will require time. Hello? <laughs> I will tell you, I have experienced this, this like this. It will require what? Money or time. You say, well, I don't mind investing my time. No, I mind. My time is a gift from God. I have to use it wisely. Amen. Amen. Even who I hang with, who I talk with, I don't want to waste my time talking nonsense. It's a waste of time. 
Amen. Hello. I'm sorry, I'm a businessman too. Not only a man of God, I'm a businessman. I don't want to sit down and talk nonsense. I want to talk something. I Talk spiritual things. Amen. Not just chatting and talking and gossiping. I don't do that. I don't have time. My time is so tight. Amen. I'm a <laughs> hello. Where is the time that God has given to us? When we are born on the face of the earth, God didn't give you money, no USD. He gave you time. Not money. Amen. God is smart. He didn't give money. He gave what? Time. That's what the Bible says. What? Redeem your time. Some people don't understand the full understanding of the word redeem. It doesn't mean to buy. It means to use it wisely. Because the days are evil. Too much responsibility. Please. Time. It's up already? 30 minutes? Do you see that? All right, I'm going to stop. Okay, we're going to stop. We'll start from next week. I have a lot I'm going to give you. You're going to be shocked. You're going to be shocked. You're going to be shocked. Write this down, then we'll continue next week. I'll give you two more. We'll continue from there next week. On wise investment. That's number four. We will start from there next week. I give you five. A few I'm going to give you. Four or five. I will give you, but we will I'll speak about that. On wise investment. Anybody here invest? Oh Jesus. Anybody here save? Oh my God. We need to start doing some practical teaching here now. See, we are saving about that. Remember the teaching on, uh, it's been a while, we're going to go over it again. Since we are talking about time, finances. 10, 20, 70. Anybody remember that? 10, 20, 70. I just gave you a budget. Say that again. 10, Say it again. 10% what? 20% what? Saving is your money. You can invest it. You can save it. And 80% what? 70% what? What is expenditure? To pay your bills, you know? Even there's some bills that need to go. Oh, God. I'm going to come back and teach this again. 80%. You only live off of 80% of your income. I'm sorry. 70? 10, 20, 70. 70% of your income. Most people living about 110. <laughs> I'm going to stop. We will continue next week. Let me just give you right number four now. I will continue from there. We're going to review on wise investment. Okay, maybe number five. When I get to number five, I might come with another expanding teaching. If you are living beyond your means. That's number five. We will continue from there next week. Number four is unwise investment. But before we can talk about investment or saving, we have to teach on don't live beyond your what? Your means. Your income should be ex should be more than your uh, expenditures, your, your 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 bills. Your income should be what than your what. Uh, now, if I ask anyone here, what's your income? And anyone there, your income, you know your income. Is that right? How many know their expenditures, their expenses? Does it go right? Well, you are an accountant, so you know. She's an accountant. You got to do that. Thank you. If I ask, do you know your expenses? 
Probably accountant, you know. You got to do budget. You must know your expenses. That's why we experience financial bondage. Amen. Amen. Somebody said to calculate. <laughs> I'm going to give you an assignment for next week. We're going to do practical teaching. Can you say amen? Yeah, and I understand they are also spiritual. We will deal with the spiritual part. And then we will talk about financial. Now, we canceled a couple years back. They were having financial bondage. Is that what I'm teaching? That almost break up their marriage. Almost. And they called, they say, cancel them. I said, good. We met with them then. We normally meet on what Thursday. On the council session, we met with them. Even the council session, the first day didn't go well. That's what also we are learned in conflict resolution. Displacement. They were not talking about the issue. They started talking about the issue, but they switched and began to talk about one another, which we corrected. They didn't know. Then they said, the problem was what? Financial what? Issue. Bondage. So after they talked and talked, then I told them, okay, we're going to cancel the session. First session, I always like you to talk. I to That they talk and they talk and they talk and they talk. We were working at different things. You know, I see even when the displacement happened, they were not talking about anything anymore. They talking about the one that you are doing. Let's talk about it. And at the end of session, I stopped him. He said, you know, I said, next Thursday, we're going to meet. And we're going to do that too. Amen? Next Friday, we'll talk. I told them, go. What's your income? Everybody knew that. What's your expenses? There was about 10 minutes silence in the room. They didn't know. A lot of people don't know. Because we are not taught to know. We are taught to make. In order for you to be successful, there are three M. Make. That's what we are taught. Manage. And multiply. We are taught to make more money, more money, but we are not taught to manage it. Hello? I know to multiply the little t-shirts out of that. Just make and spend. Just make and spend. Just make and spend. So I told them next, next Thursday we meet. I want you to itemize, and I'm going to stop. And we're going to do what? Itemize all our expenses. Everything. You know what I mean by itemize? One by one. Grocery, how much a month? Pedicure and how much? Das, how much? What else? Aircut, how much? Food, that's the first one I put there. Grocery. Some people buy grocery, but yeah, they eat outside. Entertainment. See, I can't tell you. That's entertainment. Amen. Amen. I don't spend entertainment when I eat out. My business pay for it. Hello. Entertain clients and stuff. I'm also a client of my business. Amen. Amen. So you will itemize it. I'm serious. I want you to do this, church. Bible study. This is Bible study, right? I mean, sometimes we need to put fire on the side and talk. Don't worry, fire will come. <laughs> we need to talk. Stop. Amen. I want you, church, people that are listening, itemize your what? Your expenses. Everything. Eat outside every Sunday. That is expensive, you know? Write it down. Something you will see something. You know what happened? They came back next Thursday. Remember what I'm talking about? They came back next Thursday. 
I can see a big smile. I said, oh, everything okay? I said, oh, yeah, <laughs> everything's fine. Then they realize the problem is overspending. Their expenses is greater than their income. It's not a doubt. Then we have to correct them. Lunch time, he ate outside. Maybe I don't think maybe in this teaching I will talk about the five ways to be financially free. Five. To be financially free. Practical teaching. Then after we do that, then we bring forth the fire. And the church say, Amen. My time is up. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand on our feet. We're going to pray. Amen. Glory to God. Let's begin to give thanks to God. Let's bless God. Let's exalt His name for what God has done for us, our job, our businesses that we are doing right now. Let's begin to bless God. Let's begin to thank God. Amen. Amen. Prayer. Let's begin to thank Him. Let's begin to bless Him. That's why Life Friday service, we have time to pray. Father, thank Him. Bless Him. Let's give God praise. Let's give God glory. Let's give God honor. Let's bless his name. Let's exalt his holy name. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt your holy name. We magnify your name. We exalt your holy name. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you will do. We thank you for all that you are doing. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We exalt your name. We exalt your name. We bless your holy name. Mighty God, everlasting Father, the one that was, he is, and he is to come. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We exalt your holy name. Mighty God, we bless you. Mighty God, we thank you. Mighty God, we give you praise and we give you glory. Thank you for all that you are doing. Thank you for all that you've done. Mighty God, we thank you. Mighty God, we bless your holy name. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Come on, let's bless him. Come on, let's bless him. Come on, don't bless him. Let's 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 exalt your name. Magnify your name magnify your name father we thank you father we bless you we give it praise we give it glory oh god we exalt your holy name mighty god we thank you mighty god we bless your holy name lord god we exalt your holy name oh lord mighty god we thank you mighty god we bless your holy name Come also on the Facebook, join us and pray. Come on, come on, join us and pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. We exalt your holy name. We bless your holy name. Father, we bless you, Lord God. We exalt you, Lord God. Oh, Rabba Baba Seketelele Busakaya. Oh, Baba Shaya. We thank you. We bless you. Come on, play, church. Oh, fire prayer tonight. Fire prayer tonight. Oh, fire prayer tonight. We bless your holy name. We exalt your holy name. Oh, Rata Baba Seketelele Busa. Oh, Prayer, 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 prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Thank you. 
In Jesus' name. Come on, let's say it loud. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to forgive me for not being a good steward of my finances. Heavenly Father, I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus to forgive me for not being a good steward of my financial resources. Heavenly Father, I ask you to give me another chance. To give me another chance so I can be good stewards of my financial resources in the name of Jesus. Have mercy on me, O Lord, and forgive me for not being a good steward of my financial resources. And I ask you to give me another chance to be a good steward. Heavenly Father, I ask you to deliver me for financial bondage. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because I know that Jesus paid the price. He paid the price for my financial freedom. I know that Jesus paid the price for my financial freedom. For my financial freedom. He paid the price. He paid the price for it. So Heavenly Father, I know financial freedom is my redemptive right. It's my redemptive right. So Heavenly Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus. I ask you in the name of Jesus to give me financial freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray, pray the scripture. I bind every strong man holding my finances my finance captives in the mighty name of Jesus. Matthew 16, 19. Jesus said, I will give you the keys of heaven. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. So I bind every strong man Holding my financial freedom, holding my financial captive, I bind it in the name of Jesus. 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 I declare with my mouth, I declare the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. According to Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I declare with my mouth. Because the Lord is my shepherd. I will not want. The Bible says. In Psalm 34. Verse 10. The young lion do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not lack any good things, shall not lack any good things, shall not lack any good things. I will not lack any good things. I will not lack any good things. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 I shall not lack any good thing. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare with my mouth. I declare with my mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus. I also declare. I also declare. Psalms 84. Verse 11. For the Lord is a sun and shield. Hallelujah. For the Lord is a sun and shield. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good things will he withhold from me. No good things will he withhold from me in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I also declare Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19. And my God, and my God 
and my God, and my God shall supply all of my need, all of my need, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I declare Psalm 419, I declare it boldly, I declare it boldly, and my God, and my God, and my God shall supply, shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory to Christ Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare Psalm 23 verse 6. I declare Psalm 23 verse 6. Surely, surely goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever I declare with my mouth Psalm 23 verse 6 Psalm, speak it, declare it Psalm 23 verse 6 surely surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, 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 forever. And ever, and ever, I declare with my mouth, I say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, open my eyes to see beyond visible, to see beyond visible, and make invisible veil open to me in the name of Jesus. I will stop there. I will continue. Do you know why a lot of so much. They have so much responsibility because they don't have discernment to know which one they should be doing. They don't know. So they ask God. They just do small work. They don't gamble with us like this. Prayer is so important for God to open your eyes so you can see beyond visible and make invisible Visible. So you can see, you can know what you should be doing. Amen? If I don't know it, I don't do it. Amen? Amen? Say, Heavenly Father, say, Heavenly Father, open my eyes to see beyond visible and make invisible visible to me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, open my eyes to see beyond visible and make invisible visible. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's a scripture to it. Every prayer actually I have scripture. You remember the story of Elisha and his servant when they were fighting. His servant could not see. Elijah could see that there are many on our side that on the other side is what we should have. He does not hear. He does not see. And Elisha prayed and said, Open his eyes. Who remember that? They open his eyes that he might see. Sometimes we are praying. Sometimes we don't know because we could not see. From today on, I'm going to pray too. That the Lord will open your eyes. That you begin to see. It will make invisible visible. So you know what you should be doing. So you don't do everything. You are not called to do everything. Can we pray this prayer one more time? Say, Heavenly Father, open my eyes to see beyond visible and make invisible visible. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, that you will open my eyes to see beyond visible and make invisible visible. 
In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, begin to pray for God to open your eyes to see. Come on, begin to pray. Come on, begin to pray. Come on, begin to pray loud. Pray, 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 pray. Prayer, prayer. For God to open your eyes so you don't have too much responsibility. You will only do what God wants you to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Open my eyes, O Lord. Open our eyes to see. Open our eyes to see. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open our eyes to see. In the name of Jesus. And make invisible visible. And make invisible visible. So we will know what we should be doing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open my eyes in the name of Jesus. Oh, Pastor K. Postapa. Yes, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open our eyes. Open my eyes. Open our eyes. Open our eyes. Hallelujah. We might see beyond visible. We might see beyond visible. And make invisible visible. In the name of Jesus. And make invisible visible. And make invisible visible. I want to see, Lord. I want to know, Lord. What I should be doing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Open my eyes, uh, open our eyes, uh, oh God, to see the invisible. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, open our take eyes, it. my God. Uh, we need to know, grow in the God. Uh, what you yes, are yes, yes, to do, yes. My God, uh, open, open my eyes to see. Open our eyes to see. Oh, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. And make invisible visible. Make invisible visible. Make invisible visible. Make invisible visible. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give me spiritual discernment. Give me spiritual discernment. Pray for spiritual discernment. That you may be able to discern what you should be doing. We are not called to do everything. I am not called to do everything. We want to know what is our responsibility. God is our responsibility. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open our eyes, open our eyes, open our eyes, open our eyes, oh God, oh God, our eyes to see, our eyes to clearly see, and know, my God, open, 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 to see beyond visible, and make invisible visible, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, open our eyes, in the name of Jesus, open our eyes, give us discernment, give us discernment, give us discernment, Give out this oh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name, In the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, my God. Open our eyes. Oh, God, oh, God. Lord, you said in your word that behold, you will stretch forth your hand and touch our mouth. Lord, we're saying stretch forth your hand, your hands and touch our eyes. Open our eyes. My Open God. our eyes. Oh, hallelujah. Open you our eyes. Invisible, my God. Oh, hallelujah. Pray for this amen. In the name of Jesus. Pray for this amen. This amen. This amen. Rekator Bandebahanda. Rabandeba Kondebahande Bohoa. Rambando Rambandea. E Kandele Boho Ribianda. E Kandele Bahaya. Rabandele Boho. Open our eyes. Open. Speak of this amen. In the name of Jesus, open, 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 oh God, my God, our eyes, in the mighty name of Jesus, open our eyes, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus', in name. Jesus name, amen. Tonight, before we go, I want to lay hands on you for, to get to receive spirit of discernment, for God to activate it. There are 12 gifts of the spirit. It can be done by laying of hands and God can release it according to his will. We need discernment to know what we should be doing and even when we should be doing it. Amen. Amen. Discernment. 
impart spirit of discernment. Amen. A lot of you have the gifts, but you need to be activated. Amen. It's there. That's what Paul told Timothy. I long to see you so that I may what? Lay hands and impart and do what? Spiritual gifts. Lay hands. Yes. Lay hands. And God will show us. Open your eyes. I will do that tonight in the next week before we take offering and then we, we will dismiss. Amen. We summon and for God to open our eyes. So it's as if we are gambling. don't do that. Amen. The Holy Spirit is in us. He has been lead us and to guide us for truth. Amen. I'm, not, I'm led to do that. Must lay hands and I'm going to do that. But the other prayer next week will continue next week. Just pray this. Let's do one step. Quick one prayer. One prayer. I want you to pray Psalm 681. Psalm 681. Let God arise. Say that. We're going to say a few times, then we begin to pray. Let God arise. Say, let God arise. And let the enemy of my financial breakthrough be scattered in the name of Jesus. Sometimes it's spiritual, but not all the time. That's why I like apostolic ministry. We have to be Let God arise. Say, let God arise. And let the enemy of my financial breakthrough be scattered in the name of Jesus. Let God arise. And let the enemy of my financial breakthrough be scattered in the name of Jesus. Let God arise. Let God arise. And let every enemy of my financial breakthrough be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, arise, O oh Lord. Arise, O oh Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arise, O oh Lord. Arise, O oh Lord. Let every enemy of my financial breakthrough be scattered. Be scattered in the name of Jesus. 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 Arise, O oh Lord. Arise, O oh Lord. Arise, O oh Lord. Arise, O oh Lord. Arise, oh Lord. Let the enemy, let every enemy of my financial breakthrough be scattered in the name of Jesus. 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 Arise, O Lord. Come on, arise, O Lord. 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 Arise, O Lord! Arise, O Lord! Arise, O Lord! And let the every enemy of my financial breakthrough be scattered in the name of Jesus. Be scattered. Be scattered in the name of Jesus. Be scattered. Be scattered. Mashaka poko pasa. Mesekepe. Be scattered. Say, be scattered. Arise, O Lord! Arise, O oh Lord! Arise, O oh Lord! Let every enemy of my financial breakthrough be scattered in the name of Jesus. 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 Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I pray for unexpected and expected financial miracle. To come upon me by fire. Now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I declare with my mouth, 
I pray for unexpected and expected financial breakthrough. Come to me by fire. Come to me right now. Come to me right now. Say, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Oh God. Say, Heavenly Father. Let the spirit of favor be upon me. Anywhere I go concerning my finances. In the name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Heavenly Father. Let the spirit of favor come upon me. Come upon me. Everywhere I go consigning my finances. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everywhere I go, favor is upon me. I carry favor on my head. I carry favor on my head. Favor is upon me. Favor of God is upon me. Everywhere I go, I will experience favor. I will experience favor. I will experience favor. In the name of Jesus. 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 Favor. Look at me. Favor. Look at me. I declare in the name of Jesus, favor will find me. Favor will come to my home. Favor will come to my job. Looking for me. Will come to my business. Looking for me. And looking for me. Looking for me. Somewhere for talking. I thought you would call my name. Come to me now. Favor. 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 It's upon me. It's upon me. Everywhere I go. I will encounter favor. I will encounter favor. Anything I do. I will encounter favor. In the name of Jesus. I declare favor. Over my life, yes. over my family, yes. over my family, yes. over this church, yes. over my life, yes. everywhere I go, yes. over my business, yes. anything I do, yes. favor, yes. somebody yes. scream favor, yes. somebody scream favor, yes, 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 favor, 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 matapa kopasha, mete pepepe, oh God, oh God, I see favor. I see favor. I see favor. I see favor. It's coming. Favor is coming. Favor is coming. Favor is here. Favor is here. The favor of God. In Jesus' name. Mr. Beverly would say, uh, um, uh, as in, in, in Nigeria, say, uh, Mama, what's it? Um, Mama Maya. That's it. Mama Maya would say, uh, 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 this is good soil. This is good soil. This is great soil. Amen. 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 To the ones out there, this is great soil. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So uh, uh, it's time to take the number two. You wasted this. Hey, there we go. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. With the ways to give is on the screen to cash up to um, um to the website everlastinglife.org. PayPal and Dell is finance at everlastinglife.org. Amen. 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 And amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to go ahead and just bless it right now. Amen. Father in heaven, King of glory, we thank you. We thank you because, oh my God, I, I don't know. Every time I think about what we, what would we do without you, where would we be without you, my God? Oh, glory to God, what would our life be without you? We thank you for all that you do, the seen and the unseen. My God, for covering us, for protecting us, for shielding us, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, for taking us out of harm's way, taking us out of danger. Uh, recently, you said that you, 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 you stopped a fire for somebody. Glory to God. Maybe somebody is watching. I don't know who, but there's a fire that could have uh, uh, could have uh, uh, been uh, very lethal to somebody and you shut it down. Uh, my God, I don't know if it's an electrical short. I don't know what kind of fire, but you're telling me you shut it down for this person. And Lord, we are grateful. We never, never, ever, ever take what you do lightly. Father, we ask right now that uh, 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 that you bless uh, this offering, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus, as it's for the furtherance of your kingdom in Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 You can come on up and give your offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Your tithe, your offering. Uh, bow your heads once again. Father, I thank you for this time that we have come together. Glory to God. Hallelujah to Shabbat you. We have come together to hear from you. We have come together to receive from your throne of grace. Uh, Father, as we are about to depart from this place, but never, ever from your presence. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forevermore. And the saints of God say, Amen, amen and Amen.